Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Bible study. If you don't have the PDF for this study and you want it, you'll see it up on the screen, but if you want to download it, you can get it at tobelikechrist.com, and there's a link down in the description. Welcome back to everybody who's been here before and already knows all that information and listens to me say it again and again every single day. <laughs> Let's talk about Judges chapter 8. That is our topic today. Our judge that we're going to talk about is Gideon. We've been talking about him for a couple chapters now. There's some judges that get you know one verse, like Shamgar, and then there's judges that get several chapters of information and record of their life. And uh, Gideon is one of those that gets several chapters. Definitely a key character in the book. Now, when did the events of the book of Judges, in this story in particular, happen in the timeline of the world? Well, the period of the Judges is dated by most scholars to between 1450 and 1000 BC. And Gideon's story appears about 40 years after Deborah, whose last judge that we talked about, defeated the Canaanite army with the help of Barak and Jael and all of those characters. Now let's take a look at the map and try to place some of the key locations in this chapter. We know that Gideon was from a place called Ophrah, which was in the territory of Manasseh. The Israelites attacked the Midianite army just to the north of Mount Gilboa. And that one is on the map. And then moving a little bit to the southeast, as the Midianites retreated, they went through a place called Abel Mahola. And then they went further to the southeast, crossed the Jordan River, and at least Gideon, when he was pursuing them, passed through a place called Succoth and Penuel. Our characters, we have the Midianites. They had oppressed the Israelites for seven years, and their kings brought their army of 120,000 people across the Jordan River to fight with Israel. But obviously that didn't turn out too well because they're currently retreating. Zeba and Zalmunna are going to be key to this chapter. They were two kings of Midian. And then Gideon. Gideon was the fifth judge of Israel, and he led the Israelite army against the Midianites and, and won this victory. Now move over with me to page number two, and we will begin breaking this chapter down into sections. The first section I've got, I've entitled it, Gideon Captures the Kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmunna. This is the first 21 verses of the chapter. So after they had been routed by Gideon's you know, meager force of 300 men in Judges 7, the kings of Midian fled to the south, like we just talked about. And Gideon's men pursued them all the way across the Jordan River. Now, this was a pretty long ways. I mean, we're talking miles and miles at this point. Gideon's men were exhausted. So Gideon stopped at Succoth, and he asked the men there to give his soldiers refreshment, food, right? But the men of Succoth said, no, we don't want to do that because what happens if maybe you don't capture the kings of Midian and then they come back to get revenge on us later? We don't want to have been the people who have given, you know, gave you food when you were the rebels, right? So they're like, we're not, we're not going to help you. Now, Gideon was pretty furious at this, as I think he should have been. And he told the men of Succoth that, quote, I will flail your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness. Okay, so the same thing then happened when Gideon went to Penuel. They said, no, no, we don't, we don't want to help you. Gideon promised the men of Penuel that he was going to return to their city and tear down their tower. Well, guess what happened? Gideon ended up catching up to the Midianites at a place called Karkor, and he defeated the 15,000 men that were remaining from their 120 thousand man army. So this was Gideon's 300 men against their 120,000. Here he catches up with the last 15,000 and he defeats them. Zeba and Zalmunna, who were the kings of Midian, they were captured. Gideon then returned to Succoth and Penuel, the cities that had refused him help, and he got his revenge on them and he kept his word doing exactly what he told them that he was going to to do to them. So when the elders of Succoth had been taught their lesson and the Tower of Penuel had been torn down, Gideon killed the kings of Midian. And so that's the story of how Gideon's 300 men defeated the 120,000 man Midianite army. Certainly no one could say that Israel did that on their own. God had to be involved. That takes us to our second section, which is a curious one, verses 22 through 28, Gideon's ephod, or ephod. Now, an ephod was a special garment that was, if you remember, made for the priests who, the high priest who worked in the tabernacle of the Lord. We talked about that back in, I think, Exodus. Now, Gideon here is going to make one for himself. So let's talk about this. The Israelites, after this battle, wanted to make Gideon their king, but he said, no, I'm not going to be your king. Instead, he asked all of his warriors to give him the earrings from the spoils of the Midianite army. So the men agreed to this. 
And in total, Gideon received 1,700 shekels of gold. A shekel is approximately four grams. So a bunch, a bunch of grams. <laughs> he, Gideon made a gold ephod out of this, well, gold, and uh, he, he put it in his home city. Now, unfortunately, people started to kind of revere this thing. They started worshiping it. And it even, the text even tells us that it became a problem for Gideon and his household. It's really interesting. We don't have a lot of other details about it. We're just kind of told that he did this, and it seems like it was definitely a mistake. We're told then that the land of Israel had rest for 40 years following the defeat of the Midianite oppressors. The final section is a short one, verses 29 through 35, Gideon's later years. So Gideon married a lot of women, and he had 70 sons. Yes, 70. <laughs> Seven zero. The text tells us that he died at, quote, a good old age. But as soon as he died, the Israelites turned back again to their wickedness and started disobeying God. And so that is Judges chapter 8. Now for our application. The men of Succoth and Penuel refused to pick sides because they didn't know how the battle was going to go. They didn't know who was going to win in the end, whether Israel or Midian. Now we, luckily, do not face that same dilemma. We already know who's going to win the spiritual battle that's going on all around us. Jesus, through his resurrection proved that God and those on God's side are going to win in the end. Therefore, the application for us is that we need to be quick to support those who are on God's side and always willing to give help, even when we are engaged in the same battle as them, right? The people of suck it. They're like, ah, this is your battle. This is, we're not involved in this, right? But even when we're not involved necessarily in the same battle as somebody else, like maybe our ministry is different. Maybe we are heavily involved in some other aspect of the church or of the Lord's work. Um, even when our work is different, we need to be quick to provide support to people working in other ways, however we can. Don't let God's people go without the things that they need. God's going to win in the end. You have confidence, so help with that confidence.